So I emailed my peeps looking for businesses willing to have their social media posts critiqued, actually roasted for a YouTube video, and I got takers. And since most of these folks are very active on Facebook, this video is gonna focus on Facebook posts and I'm gonna give a lot of tough love here, but it's so all of us can learn. So I do need to preface this by saying that all the businesses featured today are good at what they do as a profession. I either know them personally, or I've heard how good they are, or they have a ton of five-star reviews on Google. It's just that their social media isn't always doing them justice and we need to fix that now. So let's start with the first business, which is Take The Lead Dance Studio. And I'm choosing them first because the name of their company is take the lead and therefore they should take the lead in this video because my that comforts my OCD. But anyway, I can vouch for their dance studio personally as my husband and I did take dance lessons from them and it was a really fantastic experience. Okay, so I'm gonna pick on their Facebook post right here and it's promoting cha-cha and tango lessons with Emmanuel Papachena. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his name correctly. And let's first talk about the imagery and then go to the verbiage. Okay, with the imagery, it is somewhat dynamic. There's a starburst coming out and this cool font, but I think it could be a whole lot stronger and that's because people are drawn to people. So let's look at how Emmanuel and his dance partner are portrayed in this flyer slash image. Okay, their picture is way too small and their legs are cut off. And it's really challenging to ballroom dance without all your legs. So I might recommend we move these guys down so where they're cut off touches the bottom part of the flyer so the cutoff looks more natural and then make their photo a whole lot bigger. And the Take The Lead logo isn't needed here. People already know the post is coming from the studio because Take The Lead Dance Studio is already at the top of the post in the timeline. Whenever we're creating any marketing piece, we need to go for the cleanest look possible and ask ourselves honestly, do we need this element or not and get rid of it if we don't because cleaner looks look more professional, but they also attract the eye more. And remember that about 50% of people check their social media on their phone. So any imagery that we're creating is gonna be a whole lot smaller on a phone. And then any elements within that image are gonna be teeny tiny. Like some of this verbiage, like the teeny tiny part that says that Emmanuel is one of the top competitive dancers in coaches in the world is really hard to read. And again, it just adds clutter here. So I'd move this information to the caption above, or what I mean is write a caption above because there is no caption above right now. So if we have some of the details in the caption, that allows us more space to create a cleaner, stronger graphic underneath. But what if we scrap this whole thing and do a video instead? I mean, we're talking about ballroom dancing here. We're talking about movement and the people signing up for these classes want to learn how to move. But even if Take The Lead didn't have the time to create a whole video to promote the class, and I get that, they could take a video clip of Emmanuel and his dance partner dancing, and with Emmanuel's permission, of course, and then use that video clip as kind of like the teaser and draw for the dance classes. So I looked up Emmanuel on Facebook and found this on his page where he's also promoting the classes that take the lead. And I downloaded the video and I put it in Canva. And by the way, if you're a regular to this channel, you know I love Canva. It's like the graphic design tool for non-graphic designers like me. And I changed the original post to now look like this. And remember when we're creating graphics and we're adding text and we're adding images, remember that we can also add video to that graphic. And it's just gonna make the whole thing a whole lot more dynamic. And it's easy when you use programs like Canva to kind of just add everything together. Maybe this is my new design gesture. This, I don't know. And like I mentioned before, we still need the details in the caption above. So here's what the caption could say. Learn to dance with Emmanuel Papachena, one of the top competitive dancers and coaches in the world. $50 for each four week class at our studio in Hocassin. For details and to register, then there's a pointy finger with the contact information. And you'll see by the way that I'm trying to keep the caption as brief as possible too. I don't even put the full address in Hocassin, Delaware. I just mentioned that it's in Hocassin. I believe that practically everyone who likes to take the lead Facebook page already knows where Take The Lead is. And if they don't know where it is, they can find that out during registration or look it up anywhere on their website or Facebook page or anywhere else. It's not important for the post. Okay, I hope that helped. And now we're gonna move on to the Smart Kids Club. Now this company offers apps with a collection of eBooks for children so they can learn to love reading. And we're gonna look at this Facebook post here. Check out this case study on Smart Kids Club by Google Cloud. Now the fact that Google Cloud has a case study that features Smart Kids Club that already speaks volumes. Get it? Volumes? Books? Volumes? Okay, I thought it was a little funny. I mean, not a lot. A little. 
But anyway, this post has major problems. The first being that it starts out with a lowercase letter. We all know that sentences start with uppercase and I'm sure that Smart Kids Club knows that too. Maybe they just didn't proofread the post carefully, but I would strongly urge them, especially because they're dealing with literacy and education, that they take extra care in proofreading their posts. And actually, all of us need to take extra care with it. We're not gonna be perfect, but there are more errors out there than there need to be. And believe me, I make typos too. The key is just trying to minimize it as much as possible because typos chip away at our credibility, even if it's just on a subconscious level. But another thing I would do is give this caption a little more oomph so it gets more attention. Right now, it's just not that exciting. Check out this case study on Smart Kids Club by Google Cloud. Whenever we write a post, we have to ask ourselves, why would someone do the thing we want them to do? And in this case, why would someone stop whatever they're doing in the middle of their busy day to read a case study? So let's just try to jazz it up a little bit. So how about if we change it to something like, fewer kids read for fun these days. Check out the behind the scenes technology we're using to inspire kids to read and learn. Thanks to Google Cloud for featuring us in this case study. So we're identifying the problem, which is fewer kids are reading these days, which is true, according to Pew Research. And then we're piquing curiosity with the words behind the scenes. And by the way, anytime you can use the words behind the scenes, any excuse you have to say those words, say them because people love behind the scenes. But I still thought it was important to mention there is a case study from Google Cloud because that's huge. You'll see in the post, I also tag Google Cloud. So maybe Google Cloud would share it with our following. Now let's look at the image. It's just a logo and logos are very uninspiring. I haven't met a logo that just makes me wanna buy. Now I know that this image is what automatically populated when Smart Kids Club shared the post because it's a clickable link and really whatever image shows is on the Google Cloud website side. The Smart Kids Club really doesn't have much power over what auto populates for a clickable link. But as we're loading a post and we see the image that's popping up is kind of like, eh, we have to give ourselves permission to do some type of work around. So what I recommend in this case is instead of having a clickable link, put the link in the caption above and then just have an eye-catching image underneath, which won't be clickable, but at least it'll stand out a lot more in the newsfeed. So now the caption, which I originally edited, will now look like this with the link at the end. Now this link is way too long. It's a hot mess. We need to shorten it. So I'm gonna go to bit.ly.com and scroll down a bit and paste the long link here. And then here's the shortened version of the link. And now the post looks like this. And that looks a whole lot neater. Now for the image, we can keep things really simple. I'm just taking an image from the Smart Kids Club website and then I put in Canva and put the Google Cloud logo on top of it. And I got the logo from Canva's image library. It was super easy. It just took a couple seconds to do. And by the way, if we haven't met yet, I'm all about keeping your social media as streamlined and as easy as possible, but also powerful. So if I'm suggesting that you do something, it's going to be something that I know is doable. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to a completely different industry and that is the world of finance with GDS Investments. GDS is an investment management firm and what I like about a lot of Glenn's posts, and by the way, Glenn is the managing member and portfolio manager of GDS, is that his posts feel very organic. He's talking about the state of the economy and what it means to us and that organic feel is perfect for social media. And you'll see it in this post and this post and this post. All these posts are one right after the other. But do you see the problem? First of all, he's using the same graphic for all the posts. We need to fix that. But the other thing that bothers me a bit more is that all of these graphics have this feel of brought to you by GDS Investments, call us kind of thing. So what start off as great and organic at the top, feel salesy at the end. And when we share our expertise, we should share it without making it look like I'm sharing this information with you because I want your business. Instead, it should feel like I'm sharing this information with you because I care. And I know Glenn, and I know he cares. It's just that the way he has his posts with this graphic doesn't make it look that way. And what makes it worse is that this graphic appears over and over and over again in his timeline. Now that said, what Glenn could do if he wanted to is put his contact information in the caption in maybe every third or fourth post, but not in all of them. In most of the posts, we wanna just kind of keep it purely educational. I mean, anyone who reads the post will know it came from him. Now, as for the imagery, let's look at this post that he did about Target and Walmart. Now, I will tell you that if you're doing a post about a very well-known business or a famous person, it's very difficult to find a photo that doesn't have some type of copyright restriction. And if you run into that situation, go to commons.wikimedia.org. And that's Wikimedia, not P 
Wikipedia. You type in what you want, and then where it says license, choose no restrictions. And here's a picture of Walmart that's in the public domain, so we can use it. The only other thing I changed about this post is getting rid of the hashtags. If you're regular to this channel, you know I've talked about hashtags before. On Facebook, hashtags hurt more than they help. No one, or practically no one, is going onto Facebook and typing in hashtag investment or hashtag inflation in the search bar. They're typing in the search bar the names of their old college buddies and their second cousin five times removed or whatever. The, the people in their general social sphere and family sphere that they want to keep track of. So adding hashtags to a Facebook post only adds clutter. And you know how I feel about clutter. Okay, but other than that, the rest of the post looks good. I hope this helped. And let's move on to the next business, which is Will Weber Homes. Now, Will Weber helped me and my husband buy our home, and we know him really well. He especially has this really dry, wicked sense of humor, which you would figure out within five seconds of meeting him. So let's see how that translates into his Facebook posts. Okay, so it's not in this post, not here, not here. In fact, when I scroll through his social media, I see nothing but glossy, commercial-looking posts that are just really bland and sound nothing like him. Like, check out this one from January. There's just something about this time of year that makes many of us want to stay inside and luxuriate in the comforts of home. Okay, I'm going to have to talk to Will directly here. Will, I know you know what the word luxuriate means. You're a smart guy, okay? But you just don't use that word. As a matter of fact, you wouldn't say any of that. I think you would say something more like, there's two feet of snow outside. Glad I have enough corn chips to last a week. And maybe show yourself holding a bag of corn chips. Actually, I don't even know if you like corn chips. And I know your social media isn't about corn chips, but the key is this, you have humor that is not being used. And you can easily translate that humor into teaching people how to buy a home and sell a home and then everything that goes into the whole process. Wouldn't it be cool to talk about all this stuff while making your audience smile? And so people really get a sense for what it's like to work with Will Weber. And here's the thing, unfortunately, a lot of people think that realtors are commodity. As a matter of fact, many of us as business owners are considered as commodities by outsiders. So we need to do anything we can to show our unique voice and show our unique stance or anything that makes us stand out. And here's the deal, if you're gonna hire an outside marketing agency to write your posts, and I'm sure that's what the case is here, because Will, there's no way you would say any of this. At least hire an agency that can learn to write in your voice. Otherwise, you're just wasting your money. And I know that there are agencies out there that specialize in certain industries, and it could be the real estate industry or some other type of industry, and they might charge something as low as $49 a month. I just saw that actually recently to put posts out there for you automatically for your industry. And those posts are the worst because they're writing the same posts for everyone. So it all has to be neutral and bland. Please, please, please don't ever pay anyone $49 a month to make you look like a commodity. You can even pay me enough to look like a commodity. So we'll I know you're busy, especially in the current real estate market the way it is. But even if we got a post from you once a week, that would be better than three times a week with the stuff we see here on your Facebook page. And to make managing your social media a whole lot easier in-house, there are some really cool free content creation tools out there, which I absolutely love, and I made a whole video about it. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna include a link to that video, so stick to the end. So let's move on to the next business. Actually, it's a nonprofit organization, Delaware Institute for the Arts and Education. DIAE promotes arts integrated programming and helps students find their inner artists. And we're gonna look at this post right here where you see one of their teaching artists, Jaquan Leroy, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his name correctly, work on an art project with students at Aspira Academy. So let's look at the caption first and then move on to the image. The caption overall, I like the message a lot, but when I first saw this, I wasn't sure why the tags in the captions looked that way with the at symbol. Normally when you tag someone or an organization on Facebook, the tag appears like normal words. In fact, I tested the tags on my own Facebook page and everything looked fine. But then I clicked on DIAE's tags and each one led to Instagram pages. And then I realized the problem or what I think is the problem. They're posting on Instagram first and doing the tags there and then having the post go from Instagram to Facebook. The problem is if you do it that way, the tags will still look weird. And then if people click on it, they're directed off of Facebook onto Instagram. And a lot of times people who are on Facebook wanna stay on Facebook and people who are on Instagram wanna stay on Instagram. So it's better to keep things clean and keep people on Facebook. Now there is still a way that DIAE can streamline the process process and customize the tags. They just need to go in the opposite direction. They need to go from Facebook 
to Instagram. And it's super easy to do. So on your Facebook page, go to publishing tools, then create post in the top right corner. And then on the next screen, if you click on post two, you'll see you can select both Facebook and Instagram. And you'll see when you do that, a toggle will appear here. And if you toggle it on, you can customize both your Facebook and Instagram posts. So your Facebook posts look like Facebook posts and with Facebook tags and your Instagram posts are perfect for Instagram. Okay, so now let's move on to the image. I think it's good, but it could be better. And remember that this image and this entire post is competing with all the other images and posts in the audience's newsfeed. So the image needs to pop as much as possible. So if we're gonna use this image, you want the two students and the teacher closer up going to the principle of people being drawn to people. So I've copied the image onto my desktop and I'm cropping it into a square since this needs to fit both Facebook and Instagram. And I'm brightening this a bit and adding a wee bit of saturation so the colors pop more. This only takes a few seconds to do. There are photo editing capabilities on pretty much every smartphone. Um, I'm showing you that I'm doing it on my Mac and there are photo editing software programs pretty much everywhere. The key is though, it's worth a few seconds. And here's the before and the after. Now all that said, what would have been even stronger is if we had a completely different photo. If we had had a photo of the two students with the teaching artist at the end, showing their finished artwork with smiles on their faces and looking at the camera, that would have been even more powerful. First of all, smiles outperform non-smiles and eye contact outperforms non-eye contact and showing the happy result outperforms showing the on the way to the happy result people buy happy results and for nonprofit organizations they donate and volunteer to see those happy results and by the way if you're liking what you see so far it would mean a whole lot to me if you would hit the like button because that actually signals to youtube to deliver this video to even more people i really appreciate that thank you so now let's move on to Asso and Aglaia. Now this is a practice run by Dr. Denise Billen Mejia, and she's a retired emergency room doctor who's now a certified hypnotherapist, and she helps people overcome anxiety and break through unhealthy habits. And on our Facebook page, let's look at this post right here. Now this post was part of a series of posts leading up to Valentine's Day, and I love the concept of it. Denise put out a daily challenge that had a love theme. So let's read this. Today's challenge is to lend a helping hand. It can be by helping your neighbor to carry in their groceries, doing an errand for someone, offering to help with cleaning, anything to lend a helping hand. And I do see the helping hand concept, but it's a boys climbing a mountain, which has nothing to do with groceries or errands. So we need all new imagery. So here's one that I found. I found it on Canva, but keep in mind, you can find similar imagery on other sites like Unsplash or Pixabay, et cetera, et cetera. And if you wanna learn more about my favorite free stock image sites, I made a video all about that and I'll include a link in the description. So now the key is where do we put all those words? Or do we need them? We wanna be as brief as possible. So I just added this. Today's challenge, lend a helping hand. Between these words and this image, it pretty much portrays what Denise put in all these words here. But if I'm gonna be critical of myself, I think I created an image that looks a little too glossy. So I'm gonna jazz things up a little bit. The first thing I'm doing here is creating an animation with the words, just to create some movement and add a little bit of fun. And it takes a couple seconds to do on Canva or any similar program. But I also think I need to add something that makes this look a little more homespun. So here's an animated sticker from Canva that I just slapped on at the top. The other thing I see about Denise's original graphic that I see so often, and I just have to mention it here for all of our sakes, is that there are too many words in all caps. Now all caps may be bigger, but they're actually harder to read because all of the letters are the same exact height. So it's actually harder to differentiate the letters as you're reading them. It's fine to use all caps for a short headline, but not for an entire sentence or paragraph. Lowercase letters all have different heights. Some are high, some are medium, some are low. So they're easier to tell apart and easier for the brain to process. So I have today's challenge in all caps, but the actual instructions in upper lower. Also, whenever we run a series of posts like this Valentine series, it's super helpful to have them branded similarly and at least allude to the company brand. So for Denise, I took these colors and font straight from her website. Okay, now for the caption, and Denise has a good start here. How about sharing a little love with your community? Although I do have to bust on Denise for ending the sentence with an ellipsis. Ellipses at the ends of sentences, you know, the dot, 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 can come across very easily as very vaguely passive aggressive, even if it wasn't meant that way. So this caption could be taken as, how about sharing a little love with your community for a change? And I know Denise didn't mean it that way. And by the way, side note, 
I know that I overuse ellipses in the middle sentences and I need to kick that habit too. So just FYI, acknowledged. But anyway, let's get rid of the ellipsis and make this caption more obviously joyful and change it to, let's share a little love with our community today. And yes, there was a little heart emoji at the end. It's totally appropriate here with the Valentine's theme. Okay, so now let's move on to a post that highlights a problem that I often see, and that's from my colleague, Ron Sukanek. Now, Ron is an expert at helping professionals nurture deeper relationships through networking, and he's president of the Relationship Strategies Institute, and he's a pro with LinkedIn, so definitely check him out there. But because he volunteered for this roast, I'm gonna bust on him for one of his Facebook posts. Now, this particular post is about some networking opportunities in the Indianapolis area through Gold Star Referral Clubs, of which Ron is a regional director. So let's start with the big picture problems and get granular. The big picture is that Ron is trying to smush a whole bunch of information in a single post. One of the biggest traps that most of us fall into, and I've fallen into it too, is overestimating our audience's bandwidth. Most people are overworked and overscheduled, and very few people are gonna have the patience to stop and look at this post and look at each flyer individually. And for three of them, it actually means clicking on the flyer or tapping on the flyer so it can expand so people can read it. That's too much effort to ask of someone. And also if you put everything together all in one spot, it looks very cluttered. And we all know how we should feel about clutter. So what do we do when we have a whole ton of information to share? Because sometimes that's gonna happen. Our best bet is usually to take the main concepts and divide them into separate posts. And in Ron's case, that means taking each networking event and making it its own post. Now, in all fairness, I did see that Ron did do that much earlier. And I think he should have just stuck with that. Now, if Ron still wants to present all the networking events in a single post, then what he can do is choose one of the events to highlight. Let's say it's the one at the Blind Owl Brewery, which by the way, is a really cool name for a place. And then use that post as the teaser to direct people to check out the other locations. For instance, the caption above could say, build your business by building relationships. Check out all our networking opportunities in the Indianapolis area with a pointer finger. And then it goes to the landing page URL of Ron's choice. And for those who are interested, they click on the link and then it goes to a landing page which shows where all the different events are in the Indianapolis area. Okay, so now let's work on the flyer itself. Everything is in uppercase, we already talked about that and the color scheme isn't even close to the Gold Star Referral Club's brand of navy blue and gold, so we need to change that. And he has this light pink border and then this other border, I can't tell if these are pebbles or eggs, but they have nothing to do with networking that I can tell and all these borders take up way too much space. And we should really have thinner margins so we have more space to have the key graphics and the key words. And there's a ton of redundant information. Like here it says Gold Star, and here there's the Gold Star logo. You don't need both. And here it says they meet every Tuesday, and here it says they meet weekly. Every Tuesday implies weekly, so you don't need both. And even though the meeting is from 12 to 1, you're instructed to come at 11.30, so why not just change the time to 11.30 to 1? And what if this flyer included a picture or a video of one of these networking groups in action? Again, people are drawn to people. Now I did look for a video, I couldn't find it, but I did find this photo on Ron's Facebook page. And Ron, for this photo, I'm not sure which of these networking groups this is, but let's just pretend it's for Blind Owl Brewery for educational purposes. Okay, so here's the before, and here it is all together in the after with the photo, the brand colors, and the simplified messaging. And if you wanna make it easier to create social media and make your social media more powerful, then definitely check out this video in the top right corner. I share with you my favorite content creation tools. These are tools that are all free, and I think fun and easy to use. Thank you so much, and see you in the next video.